What is a robots.txt disallow statement and how should you use it on your website? A robots.txt file is a plain text file located in your website's root or main directory that contains instructions about how you want robots to crawl through your website. So for example, Google is going to come to your website and they're going to crawl through all the pages that they can find. And they're going to open up those files and extract content from those files. So that way they can make decisions about how to rank your website in search results. And normally you're going to want Google to crawl everything they can find on your website or pretty much everything on your website. But there may be a few things that you do not want Google to crawl. I'll get to why you don't want Google to crawl in just a moment, but if you do not want Google to crawl a particular file, you can provide an instruction on your robots.txt file. And that instruction comes in the form of a disallow statement. You're disallowing the robot from being able to crawl that particular file. Now, the first thing that you need to keep in mind about a robots.txt file is these are not directives that the robots have to follow. These are better thought of as suggestions that most robots will follow, but not all robots will actually follow these instructions. So Google will go through and they will follow your instructions on the robots.txt file, but other robots like spam robots will not. So the robots.txt file is great at helping guide legitimate robots like those from Google or Bing through your website, but you will need other types of controls in place to limit what spam bots are doing on your website. So let's take a look at a robots.txt file and get an idea of how these files work and how we can use a robots.txt file to guide robots around our website. Robots.txt files are open and public, so you can view anybody's robots.txt file out on the web. For example, you can view Amazon's robots.txt file by going to amazon.com slash robots.txt. Now, Amazon's robots.txt file, it's pretty involved. They have a lot going on here, which is why it makes a good example to understand what a robots.txt file does. Other websites, you'll look at their robots.txt file and they're not nearly as involved, not as much going on with that. There's no requirement that you have to specify a lot of things in your robots.txt file. Robots.txt file can be very simple, it can be very complex, it really comes down to what you need on your website. So as you're thinking about how you wanna guide robots through your website, it's going to be very specific to your website's needs and how your website is structured. So don't just copy what somebody else is doing, really think through what you need on your particular website. Taking a look at Amazon's robots.txt file, the top line has a user agent statement. User agent specifies what robots need to follow these particular instructions. In this case, this is set to user agent star. A star is a wild card. So that wild card means that these instructions apply to all robots. So all robots need to review these instructions and follow these instructions when they're coming to Amazon's website. Now, before I get into talking about the disallow statements, I do wanna point out that the user agent doesn't have to always match all robots. You can target specific robots and you can say that specific robots can only do certain things. You have different instructions for different robots. So you could have different instructions for Googlebot than you do for other robots on the website. We can see an example of this on Amazon's website. So if I scroll to the bottom of their robots.txt file, we can see at the end there's these three statements where they have different user agents specified. For example, this statement provides instructions that are specifically for the user agent GPT bot. GPT bot is ChatGPT's bot from OpenAI. So Amazon is providing specific instructions for how that robot should crawl their website. And those instructions only apply to GPT bot. They do not apply to other robots like Google's robots crawling through Amazon's website. Going back up to the top, let's talk about what this disallow statement does. So this disallow statement specifies a particular directory on this website that Amazon does not want any robot to crawl through. And we know it doesn't apply to any robot because of the star, right? So no robot should crawl this particular file. So when a robot comes to Amazon's website and they're crawling through and they're looking at files and they find links to things, they're trying to fetch files based on those links, the robot might come across a URL of exec slash OBIDOS slash account access login. And when they find that file, this disallow statement is telling the robot, 
don't fetch this file. Don't open up this file. We don't want you to look at it. So a robot that respects robots.txt files like Googlebot will not crawl that particular file and will ignore it. They won't actually fetch any information from that page. Now, along with disallow statements, you can also specify allow statements. And allow statements are a way that you can add exceptions. So we can see what Amazon is doing here with that, with these set of instructions that they're providing. The top line says that they disallow everything in the wish list directory. You're not allowed to crawl anything in that directory at all. And that applies to all robots because of that user agent star. However, they have three exceptions to this. So while they can't crawl anything in the wishlist directory, the first exception is they can't crawl anything in the wishlist directory unless it includes the word universal. Here again, we see the star, this acts as a wildcard. So that would mean that it's universal plus any other text, universal A, universal B, universal C, and so on. They can crawl those. That's an exception to this disallow statement. And the same would be true for vendor button and get button as well. But anything else in the wishlist directory can't be crawled. So when you combine these disallow and allow statements, you're able to get really intricate and involved rules for how robots can move through your website. If you want to do something this complex, make sure that you really understand what all those rules mean and how they all work together. Now, another type of disallow statement we have is what we see Amazon doing for GPT bot down here. This disallow statement is a disallow all. And this is a really powerful disallow statement. What this disallow statement is saying is that GPT bot is not allowed to crawl anything on Amazon's website. They are entirely blocked from crawling Amazon's website. And GPT bot from OpenAI does respect the robots.txt file. So GPT bot, OpenAI's bot would see this directive and they would not crawl anything on Amazon's website. Now, this is not something you ordinarily want to do unless you're really thought through the issues and really thought through the complications and everything involved with blocking a robot from crawling the entirety of your website. A lot of websites are blocking AI bots like OpenAI's GPT bot from being able to access the entirety of their website, but other websites are choosing to do other things. They're allowing robots to see some things from those AI companies but not everything else on the website. So even here, you wanna be careful and very mindful with how you're writing those particular rules on the robots.txt file. You also wanna be careful with something like a disallow all, that you do it correctly and you don't accidentally prevent Google from being able to crawl the entirety of your website. Because if you prevent Google from being able to crawl the entirety of your website, that can really affect your SEO performance. Your website can fall out of search results if Google can't crawl everything. So be careful when you're adding things to your robots.txt file. Okay, we now know what disallow statements do and how we target certain robots and how we can make exceptions and all of that, but why would you disallow anything in the first place? So a disallow statement is really great to use when you want to prevent Google or another bot from being able to fetch any content on your page but you don't really care if those robots know that the file existed. In Google's case, they will sometimes index pages and rank pages that are disallowed. And that's because Google still knows about that URL. They still understand that that is a page that exists on the website. They've seen backlinks pointing to it, maybe even seen internal links on your own website pointing to that particular file. So Google understands that maybe that file is something of value, but they can't fetch it, they can't crawl it, but they're still going to move it into the index. They're still going to rank that particular page. So disallow is great when you have a page like that, that you know Google is gonna still find, maybe Google will still choose to index it, but you just don't want them fetching content from that page because that page is going to create problems for Google when they do try to fetch it. A cart page on an e-commerce website is a good example of this. There's going to be a lot of links pointing to the cart page. It's not really that big of a deal if Google ends up indexing or ranking the cart page in search results, people may wanna find that cart page on your website in search results. But you don't want Google fetching that page from your website. You don't want them actually crawling that page because it might create problems within your tracking system. It might create problems uh, within your code of how you process a bot accessing something like a cart page. So a disallow for your cart page would make a lot of sense 
to make sure that Google is crawling your website correctly. If, however, you do not want uh, Google indexing and crawling a particular page, meaning you do not want Google to fetch this page and you do not want this page showing up in search results, then you need to do something different than the disallow statement. The disallow statement only governs crawling. It does not govern indexing behavior on Google's part. So if you want to both not have Google index a page and you want to not have Google crawl a page, then you need something else. In those cases, you probably need to use something like authentication where you're requiring a username and password before somebody can access that page. This often happens with staging environments. You, of course, don't want Google crawling your staging environment, but you also don't want Google indexing your staging environment. So instead of a disallow, which would potentially allow Google to still rank your staging environment in search results, you want to do something stronger by providing a username and password restriction to access your staging environment because Google can't log in, right? They can't type in a username or password to get to that staging environment. Google will not be able to crawl through that website, but they also won't be able to index that page either. Now, the other type of page that you may want to consider a disallow for, and where I've seen people try to use disallows, is where you want to limit how much Google is crawling certain types of files on your website. I've seen people do this with image directories, video directories, where you want to discourage the volume of crawls. This can get tricky, though, because if you limit those crawls, that can help your server capacity, can help for some technical reasons, but it can put you in a situation where Google can't access those files and can't appropriately decide how to rank the pages on your website. And in that case, you can end up losing a lot of organic traffic. So the disallow is usually not the best option there. The better option is to do some form of rate limiting and controlling Google's crawls in other ways. So to recap, the reason you would disallow pages is if you don't want Google to crawl the page, because it's just not a page Google needs to pay attention to or something they need to think about or evaluate when they're going through your website, or if it's going to cause problems if Google were to crawl the page. Like on that card example on the e-commerce website, that might be something that's a problem if Google crawls it because it's going to affect your website's tracking too much. But where you do not want to use the disallow is if you're intending to keep things out of the index or if you're trying to reduce how much Google is crawling certain types of files on your website. There's better options to handle both of those, and the disallow should only be used in very limited circumstances. If you have any questions about working with your robots.txt file, what to include, what not to include, and how Google's working with it, please let me know. You can email me at matthew at elementive.com. If you liked this video and like to see more like it from Elementive, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.